If you were given the ability to change your gender at the touch of water, would you take it? Today we're talking about a fantasy Thai drama, Great Men Academy. The story begins when Shayla, the heroine, gets into a fight with her classmates and is ordered to be suspended from school for three months because her boyhood hero, Senior Brooke, is being trolled by his classmates. Bored, Shayla asks two friends to play with her after school, but instead of waiting for her friends, she encounters an injured unicorn at the lake. Kind-hearted Shayla helps the unicorn with his wounds, and the unicorn promises to fulfill one of Shayla's wishes. Shayla immediately wishes for love. Immediately after, Shayla is kicked into the water by a unicorn and she surprisingly switches genders to become a boy. Out of nowhere, Shayla sees herself being rescued by Senior Brooke. Upon awakening, Shayla realizes that all of her feminine gender traits are gone, and when she puts her hand on some indescribable part, the actual touch causes her to let out a scream of utter despair. The unicorn tells Shayla that she can turn back into a boy by taking a dip in the lake. She has to come here every night before 12 p.m. to change back into her daughter's body, or she'll be stuck in her boyish state forever. Immediately afterward, Shayla meets her twin friends who come looking for her. The two thought she was a stranger at first, but the boy in front of them was wearing Shayla's clothes and would do their friend's secret dance, even knowing the friend's catchphrase. The two finally believe the boys are Shayla. After a bit of research by several people, they suspect that Shayla's tomboy, Senior Brooke, likes boys. So, Unicorn tells Shayla to turn into a boy to pursue Senior Brooke, and Shayla's friend suggests that Shayla take three months off from school to try it out. Whether Brooke likes boys or girls, Shayla can now be whatever she wants to be. Shayla decides to be brave for the sake of the man she loves, and changes into men's clothes to report to the gentleman's academy that Brooke attends. Shayla has just arrived at school and has made two great friends, the open-minded ocean and the smiley river. Coincidentally, they were also assigned to the same dorm room. Then the popular idol, Brooke Senpai, shows up and somehow he looks at Shayla in a very special way. Does he really like boys? Brooke's classmate and best friend, Senior Sook, joins in the hilarity, not only catching freshman Shayla in the act, but also viciously saying, you're already predetermined by me to not be able to escape, and I'm going to toy with you this year. Brooke is amused, but as soon as he meets Shayla's gaze, his face turns sour and he hurries away. At night, Shayla sneaks out of her dorm room to take a dip in the lake to turn back into a daughter, not realizing that she has run into her own brother, Bertie, who is a student at the Gentleman's Academy. Bertie is a student leader in the dorm and reminds Shayla that she can't come in or out of her dorm room after 11 p.m. It just so happens that Ocean is eating hot pot in his dorm room and is smelled by Bertie. Shayla takes advantage of her brother going to make an arrest and slips away. Looking around the lake to see that no one was around, Shayla stripped off her clothes and slowly made her way down to the water, finally transforming back into her daughter's body just before 12 o'clock. The next day, Shayla bumped into so many boys in the bathroom coming to shower that she really didn't know where to look with her pathetic eyes. That's when Senior Brooke arrived. Shayla immediately shifts her attitude and pretends to brush her teeth and stick around to sneak a peek at Brooke. She ends up taking too long to brush her teeth and is suspected by Bai, a second-year senior, and almost reveals herself during the conversation because men and women speak differently in Thai. On the other hand, Ocean comes to meet River for dinner and catches River looking for her purse when she accidentally bumps off Shayla's bag. They found a tampon just as Shayla returned and rushed to grab it. Facing Ocean's questioning, Shayla hurriedly explains that it belongs to her girlfriend and takes out her friend's photo, lying to them that both girls are girlfriends. River accidentally flipped over a picture of Shayla and looking at him like that he's totally mesmerized, ah. Shayla snatches the phone back and lies that it's her sister. Soon after, the new students had their first class. Mr. White, who was in charge of the class, asked the group what the school motto meant when it asked the gentleman to always polish his shoes. The freshmen gave a variety of answers, but it was Shayla's answer, gentlemen should take care of their hygiene, that pleased Ms. White the most. Mr. White then said to start with the basics before moving on to higher practices. As a result, as soon as the class was over, everyone forgot all about it and turned the cafeteria into a dumping ground, all waiting for the cleaning lady to come and clean it up. Ocean is not satisfied with Mr. White's teaching. A passing Brook senior tells the crowd that don't look at Mr. White. He's actually the strongest person to pass the school's ultimate challenge. Shayla has eyes only for Brooke and presses the other woman to find out what elective she's enrolled in. Brooke realizes that Shayla wants to study with him and lectures Shayla that she shouldn't go with the flow. He seems to reject Shayla as a schoolboy. 
In the afternoon, Shayla came to the cafeteria for groceries and couldn't help but start cleaning up after herself when she saw so much trash. The scene was watched by Sook and a smile appeared on his face. During the night, the freshman learned that their cleaning lady had passed away because she slipped and fell in the cafeteria and blamed themselves for the mess they had made of the cafeteria today. Shayla began volunteering to do hygiene as penance, and others followed Shayla's lead. The cafeteria suddenly lost power and went dark. A terrifying ghostly figure scares the freshman half to death. The mystery is soon revealed, and it turns out that no one is dead at all, and that this is a play directed by Sook to fit in with Mr. White's lesson to the group. The seniors and teachers do this to try to tell people to keep clean and not get themselves in trouble with others. And with that, the group completed the first real class at the Gentlemen's Academy. The next day, Brooke couldn't open her eyes after washing her face and looked around for a towel. The two held hands as Shayla handed out towels. Brooke's reaction is huge and Shayla finally realizes why Brooke hates her so much. It turns out that the time when she fell into the lake and turned into a boy and was rescued by Brooke turned out to be real. Brooke has seen Shayla in women's clothing, and then Brooke can't help but explode when he realizes the man is a freshman at the Gentleman's Academy and keeps staring at him. For Shayla, she learns good news and bad news. The good news is that Senior Brooke doesn't like boys, and the bad news is that Senior Brooke really hates Shayla in her boyish state. It was so hard to make it to Saturday and not have to stay at school. Shayla turns back into a girl and goes to confide in her twin friend. A friend suggests that Shayla lie about wearing women's clothes for a dance recital so that Senior Brooke won't think she's a transvestite. But Shayla just doesn't have the courage to face Elder Brooke and explain. That's when Shayla's brother Bertie came home. Seeing Shayla made him angry. Bertie is a student leader and is responsible for dormitory discipline. School rules prohibit students from leaving the dormitory after 11 p.m. But Shayla has to go for a dip in the lake before 12 o'clock in order to turn back into a girl, or else she'll be a boy forever. Shayla keeps prying into her brother's check in time to avoid him. But the siblings fight a lot, and Bertie doesn't answer Shayla's questions. That's when Shayla's twin friends came sniffing around. Bertie gets nervous. He has a crush on Gwen, one of the twins. Through a beauty trick, Bertie gives Gwen a full account of her checking routine. The scene shifts to Shayla, who encounters her roommate River in the woods with a fall, and Shayla rushes up to help with the wound. River had seen pictures of Shayla in her girl state before, when Shayla had lied about it being her sister, and River had just taken it seriously. After getting up close and personal with Shayla in her girly state, River falls in love with her straight away. Shayla fled without waiting for his confession. Back at school, River asks Shayla to help him woo her sister. Shayla hurriedly refuses, saying that she thinks of him as a brother, but the other man is trying to chase her. Shayla was shy and angry and very embarrassed, and didn't get a little better until Mr. White's class. Mr. White told the group that an extra eye can discover new perspectives. That's why he asked the freshmen to go on a campus-wide search for counselors, so that the counselors they found could act as a third eye on everyone's strengths and weaknesses. And they have to find the counselor within two weeks and have him open three envelopes in sequence that contain tasks for the freshmen to perform. Ocean and Shayla are both fans of Senior Brooke and are the first to think of him as a counselor. Brooke accepts Ocean's request and a saddened Shayla is teased by Senior Sook. Sook volunteers to be Shayla's counselor. The first task is for the new student to complete any instructions given by the counselor. Sook, who likes to play pranks on others, asks Shayla to play a prank on him and even finds Bai, a second year student, to be the target of the prank only for Shayla to be caught by Bai, a senior, and be pranked instead. Bai and Sook accidentally see a unicorn design on Shayla. Shayla explains that it's a tattoo, Bai's expression gets weird, and Sook chases after Shayla and insists on seeing her tattoo. After a chase, Sook catches Shayla. In casual conversation, Shayla advises Sook not to be so idle, but to set some goals to work towards, such as winning the school's ultimate challenge and getting the legendary unicorn blessing. Even if Sook is lazy and unambitious, he can still make wishes for his loved ones and friends. Sook starts thinking seriously about Shayla's suggestion. On this night, Shayla's brother Bertie was checking in. After her brother leaves, Shayla slips out of the dorm only to be caught by senior Bai. But he doesn't give Shayla a hard time and promises not to tell Bertie. After Shayla leaves, Bai looks at her back with an increasingly odd expression. The next day, 
Sook is confident that he's going to beat Brook in the ultimate challenge and become the strongest. Brook is a little surprised how the lazy Sook looks like a different person. But Shayla is more of a headache for Brook than this formidable opponent. Brook's loving attitude toward Shayla breaks Shayla's heart. Sook sees Shayla stumble and urges Shayla to open the second envelope to divert her attention. The second task requires new students to apply what they learn while performing the first task to their lives. Shayla associates the pranks with being caught by Bai but inadvertently bringing the two closer together and being as funny as Sook is the only way to be well liked. Sook asks Shayla how she is going to put these understandings into her life. It occurred to Shayla that if she could make Brooke Sr. laugh, the other wouldn't hate her. Sook learns that Shayla is disgusted by Brooke for wearing women's clothes, but is too afraid to explain. Sook gave Shayla a gentle pat on the head, reminding that cheerfulness and humor come with bravery first. Shayla then goes to the rooftop for a break and misunderstands that River is about to jump and rushes over to talk him out of doing something stupid. River half-jokes about dating Shayla's sister, and with human lives at stake, Shayla has to say yes. In fact, River doesn't want to jump at all. He just wants to stand on the bench and look out over the forest, hoping to see Shayla's non-existent sister. Shayla is impressed by River's persistence and courage and makes an important decision. And Sook's side is explaining for Shayla, telling Brooke that Shayla is wearing women's clothes and is just attending a school dance. At this point, Shayla also comes to the door and fools Brooke by dancing in women's clothing, and their relationship is finally eased. The two weeks pass quickly and Sook, as Shayla's counselor, opens the third envelope and is shocked by the credible contents. The assignment turned out to be to ask the counselor what he had learned in two weeks, and Sook began to actively prepare for the task. On the other side, Sook, who took a black belt in judo, wrestled Brooke to the ground, slouching as if he was a different person for the ultimate challenge. Brooke is very surprised by the change in Sook, and it's no other than freshman Shayla who causes Sook to change. In Mr. White's class, he sent each counselor's letter of insight about the two weeks to the freshmen in their charge. Sook is thankful to Shayla for making him learn to work towards a goal. Watching Shayla be so happy when she achieves a small goal makes Sook want to go all out for a change. Mr. White provided a final summary of the situation, with the freshmen learning from the counselors and the counselors learning from the freshmen. Everyone has strengths and everyone in life is a mentor. After the lesson, Shayla runs to thank Sook and finds a chance to catch Sook in the act. Sook doesn't care. He tells Shayla that the wish he'll make to the unicorn after he wins the ultimate challenge, he wants to give his mom a house near the water. As soon as the words were out of his mouth, Sook turned around to find Shayla lying asleep on the lawn. He instinctively starts teasing Shayla, and suddenly Sook looks at Shayla a little flustered. It's like he's in love. Along with Shayla, many of the boys in the gentleman's academy are influenced by her. Sook obsesses daily about whether he's gay or not, and Brooke clears up her misunderstanding about Shayla. River has a date with daughter Shayla on his mind every day. Shayla is like the monk who burrows into the den of monsters and has to watch out for a bite every day. Today Shayla took a class on mind reading from Ms. White. Mr. White names Ocean and asks him to talk about his story, and then we all get to tell the difference between true and false. Ocean talks about his pompous love life, and Ms. White points out the true and false parts of it based on his micro-expressions and small gestures. Ocean was amazed by Mr. White, and the students took serious notes and prepared to use mind-reading techniques against their favorite girls. On this day, Shayla runs into Brooke, who is practicing judo. Brooke and Shayla talk about how he was inspired to practice judo after reading a comic book about it. Shayla asks Brooke to teach her judo on a whim. Brooke answered him by wrestling Shayla. Practicing judo is hard work. Shayla retreats to borrow comic books about judo from Brooke and the two interact more. Returning to Mr. White's class, he brings in an advanced version of mind reading, eye reading. Having heard that girls' eye expression is stronger than boys, the boys were pumped up and ready to find a girl to try it out on. That's when Mr. White initiated a little game where one person guesses a color between red and black, and the other person comes in and guesses. River challenges Shayla to introduce her sister to him if he guesses correctly five times in a row. As it turned out, River actually did it, and Shayla felt the sky spinning. On the day of the date, Shayla purposely dresses up in a weird way to try to scare River away. As soon as Shayla leaves, Brother Bertie starts using mind-reading techniques on each other, along with his friend Guyan. As a result, both sides read a message, I like you all. No, I'm going to have to get someone to use mind-reading as well. Shayla's side of the plan doesn't go too well, and the odd costume doesn't phase River, 
who goes on another eating binge, but she forgot one thing, liking someone is liking them with their flaws. Shayla had to pull up the stops and act like she admired Senior Brooke, making River jealous and closing her eyes with a mesmerized look on her face. Shayla finds River running down the road to comfort the lost girl as she opens her eyes. Shayla joins in to help the little girl find her mom, and they soon find her mom. At Shayla's suggestion, she and River also wanted the little girl to take a picture together. Influenced by River's kindness, Shayla no longer resists him. On the other hand, the Playboy Ocean fails to confess his love to his female internet friend. Although the other person also likes him, the female internet user observes Ocean's words and actions are very much like a bad man. Ocean returns to school with his head hanging down Mr. Bike can see that Ocean has failed in this confession, and he teaches Ocean another lesson. Mind reading is not about lying to girls, but trying to understand each other. If A can read B, but B keeps being kept out of A's mind by A's lies, it will be difficult for the two to move forward in their relationship. Ocean comes to a realization and calls his female internet friend to confess that he has a girlfriend. The result was expected. The other party hung up angrily. And on Shayla's side, she ended her date with River and turned back into a man. As soon as she gets back to school, she receives a comic book loaned to her by Senior Brooke. That's when Senior by perversely, and strangely enough, puts a bracelet his sister gave Brooke on Brooke in front of Shayla. Shayla runs to ask Sook, which reveals that Ross, Senior Bai's sister, had a relationship with Brooke, but then it was also Ross who dumped Brooke. Shayla goes over Sook's intel and suddenly realizes that there's something weird about Sook. At the moment Sook is in an extreme tangle. A celebrity once said that every boy thinks he likes girls until he meets a boy he likes. At night, Brooke catches Sook looking away on his cell phone, and he thinks Sook has a girlfriend. When Sook leaves, Brooke curiously picks up her phone and realizes that Sook is actually staring at Shayla's picture, and immediately guesses that Sook might like Shayla. The next day, Sook and Brooke have a judo fight on the horizon. Sook finds a comic that Brooke lent to Shayla in the locker room, and Shayla turns out to have hidden a picture of Brooke in the comic. By now Shayla's favorable opinion of Brooke was obvious, and Brooke seemed to think of something. The match is officially underway and Sook desperately tries to pin Brooke and just as he's about to win the match, he suddenly hears Shayla cheering for Brooke. Brooke catches Sook off guard for a moment and bounces back. Going back in time to before the match started, Brooke took advantage of Shayla's fondness for him by urging Shayla to make sure she cheered him on loudly. Brooke knows that Sook likes Shayla, but uses Shayla to distract Sook and win the game in one fell swoop. It's like winning the game and losing your conscience. Brooke has trouble sleeping and eating and gets up in the night to drink water to try to calm down and accidentally see Shayla sneaking out of her dorm. He follows them all the way to the lake and sees Shayla dip into the lake to become a daughter. Her transformation is watched by Brooke, and then a wet Shayla walks ashore. I couldn't help but send the cameraman a ton of durians when I looked at his shameless camera angles. Shayla tells Brooke all about unicorns and transgenderism, confessing her love to Brooke in the process. Brooke finishes her shock and rejects Shayla harshly, turning her head away. A heartbroken Shayla refuses to give up and runs back into the lake to become a man again, vowing to hunt Brooke down. But the next scene breaks Shayla's heart completely. Shayla is surprised to see Brooke talking and laughing with Bai's sister Ross. This Brooke has some real nerve to tell Ross about him using Shayla's favor to influence Sook and win the match. The average person who hears this will either comfort Brooke that man is not for himself or criticize him for being ungenerous. Ross, however, picks neither and comes up and asks Brooke if she likes Shayla. The whole world understands that Ross wants to get back together, but Brooke doesn't seem to realize it and just replies with conviction that he and Shayla are not a possibility. Shayla is very upset when she hears the conversation and runs away crying. The past comes back to her, and she ends up accidentally crying too much and not paying attention to the time. And by the time Shayla comes back to her senses and rushes all the way to the lake, it's too late. From there, she's trapped in male form, completely locked in and hard to add to the drama going on. As dawn breaks, the entire school conducts jungle training to build students' willpower. Brooke badmouthed the shady Shayla. From a distance, Sook sees the two, as if he knows what it's like to be out of love. Later, Shayla is punished for not being able to keep up with the intensity of the jungle training, and her brother Bertie is punished for being too afraid of heights to complete the training. After training, Brooke asks Shayla out again and he tells Shayla to get the hell out of there or he'll tell his teacher Shayla's secret. Undeterred, Shayla threatens Brooke with what she overheard about her designing Sook. Shayla was red-eyed and very sad after Brooke's boy wonder left. 
Following the loss of Sook, Shayla is in the throes of puberty. In just a few days, Shayla, Brooke, and Sook's relationship changes dramatically. Sook doesn't dare to stay a moment longer when he meets Shayla and leaves in a hurry every time. Emotionally unavailable, Shayla has no choice but to burn off her excess energy by sweating it out. She and Bertie form a league of losers and train together, trying to get through the jungle training early. While training, Shayla accidentally learns that her brother is afraid of heights, and Bertie's crazy training sessions are a bit of a puzzle to Shayla. During the night, Bertie reveals to Shayla the reason why he trains hard to get good grades in all subjects. Since his father passed away, he's been the only man in the family. If he could get a perfect gentleman from the college with excellent grades, he could get a good job, his mom wouldn't have to work far away, and his sister could be taken care of. Shayla reddened as she listened. The next day's jumble training test saw siblings Shayla and Bertie cheering each other on. Along the way, the two each overcame weaknesses in physical strength and fear of heights, and eventually completed the challenge successfully. Physical weaknesses are good to overcome, but psychological pains are hard to heal. Sook's side hesitated for a long time and finally deleted Shayla's picture. But as soon as I saw Shayla pass by, that agonizing and maddening emotion instantly came over me. During the night, Sook plucks up the courage to get Shayla medicine for her sore muscles. The atmosphere gradually became subtle as the two men shared a room. Shayla asked Sook a question out of the blue. What would you do if a much desired goal became unattainable? Sook replied that if she really desires it, then she will definitely give it her all. But if she still can't do it, then she will change her goal. The demons that plagued Shayla finally dissolved in this moment. After dropping off Sook, Shayla goes to Brooke to borrow a comic book. Brooke asks Shayla why she must stay. Shayla cuts to the chase, saying that she's staying not for Brooke, but to win the perfect gentleman for the school and get her unicorn wish. Brooke said coldly, even if you were female, I wouldn't let you. Shayla shot back defiantly, just think of me as a guy. The walls have ears and by years the two conversing and sees Brooke laughing at the comic book Shayla returned. By storms into the restroom in a huff and takes a swig of an unknown liquid. Immediately afterward, the bathroom lights up strangely, and by, the younger brother, is gone, leaving only Ross, the older sister, in her brother's clothes. Ross muttered to himself, how did senior Brooke know that Shayla was a girl and why was he smiling at her? It turns out that Ross is blessed by a unicorn and turns into by in his male state so it's just Ross from start to finish. A woman's sixth sense allows her to pick up on Shayla's crush on Brooke. While spying on Shayla, Ross accidentally discovers that Shayla has also been blessed by a unicorn and has gone from a girl to a boy. Now Brooke seems to really like Shayla again, and Ross is furious at the time. At the moment, River is just as hurt by love as Rosie is, and Shayla hasn't been returning his messages. It was as if the relationship was buried in the grave before it even started. Instead of waiting for Mr. White to enlighten them about the troubles of puberty, everyone waits for a substitute teacher, Mori, who dresses like Conan. This Mori is a big oddball, summoning Sadako right off the bat. The class he teaches is called Emotion Management, and Sadako is a virtual projection set up by Mori to gather the various human emotions Mori has collected. A naughty student comes to mess with Sadako, which results in Sadako simply losing control and suddenly disappearing. Mori rushed to ask for help. He designed Sadako to have more negative energy, and Mori uses his subject grades to bully the students into helping him sensitize Sadako. During the night, the group splits up into two groups for the operation, Ocean, River, and Brooke in one group, and Shayla and Sook in another. Sook gradually adjusts to his relationship with Shayla and starts getting into all sorts of mischief again. Sook drew Sadako in with this toss. Sook rushes to get Shayla to send a message reporting Sadako's location. River receives the message and is dumbfounded when it turns out that Shayla forgot to switch accounts and mistakenly used her girl's account to send River a message. River wonders how Shayla's sister knew about Sadako. Shayla also realized that she was using the wrong account and accidentally screamed out. Sook rushes to cover her mouth the closeness catches people off guard. The two waves then converged and surrounded Sadako. Sadako tells her story, set up as a woman who was dumped by her boyfriend and often ruminates on what's wrong with her. These words strike a chord with River, who is also troubled by love. Sadie mistakes River for her boyfriend and mournfully asks why he's leaving. Brooke tells Sadako that leaving is an answer that her boyfriend doesn't love her anymore. The irritated Sadako suddenly screams out of control before disappearing again. 
Brooks' mishandling of the situation caused Sadako's negative emotions to rise instead of fall, and the group had to disband first and wait for the next action. After the dismissal, River comes to ask Shayla why it was Shayla's sister who informed him of Sadako's location. Shayla falsely claimed that he accidentally sent the message to his sister, who was pressed for time and asked her to help forward it. Faced with a lie that was easily recognized, River of course chose to believe him, who asked for such a cute sister. Shayla is then blocked again by Brooke, who wants Shayla to put herself in the girl's shoes and tell him what he just did wrong. Shayla tells Brooke that boys and girls are the same when they're angry, and that what they need is not a big speech, but a listener. Brooke then realizes where she went wrong. Shayla just got done being a teacher, and when she turned around, she hit the door. As Brooke checks out her injuries, Ross, who has transformed back into Bai, rushes in and pulls Brooke away, using Bai as a reminder for Brooke to look good tomorrow and be on time for her date with Ross. The next day, Brooke and Ross, who has transformed back into a daughter, hang out from day to night. Coincidentally, River asks the non-existent Shayla's sister to meet her in the neighborhood again. Brooke is amused to see Shayla who has stumbled to her appointment. Seeing that things are not going well, Ross decisively proposes to get back together, but is rejected by Brooke. Ross takes the bracelet she gave Brooke and leaves in tears. That's when Shayla meets up with River as well. River is like Sadako, constantly obsessing over what's wrong with him and why Shayla's sister doesn't like him. Shayla goes along with River's comment that he does have a lot of flaws in order to get him to die. River stopped laughing and left in tears. The next day, Ross transforms back into Bai and warns Shayla that he already knows Shayla can transform and likes Brooke. Shayla felt that the other side couldn't possibly have evidence and was adamant that she wouldn't admit it. And already enraged, Bai pours Shayla with an unknown liquid. And seeing that Shayla doesn't turn back into a girl, Bai realizes that Shayla is locked in a boy's body. Bai drinks the mysterious liquid, turns back into a girl, and tells all. It turns out that in order to get Brooke back, Bai sacrificed 20 years of his life and his unicorn for the chance to stay by Brooke's side. This is how the unicorn turned her into a boy. The mysterious liquid by drinks is the lake water that soaks up the water that can change sex. That way, she wouldn't have to run to the lake every night to switch genders and stay in her daughter's body through the 12 o'clock. After hearing what Ross has to say, Shayla confesses her feelings. She doesn't like Brooke anymore and only thinks about turning back into a daughter. The feud between the two comes to an end, and Shayla returns to her dorm to see River in a state of disarray. Sook organizes the group to continue the mission to penitentiate Sadako, and he wants no part of it. Shayla rages at River for being a coward and drags Sook out of the dorm. Sadako's side of the negative energy is getting heavier and heavier, first pushing back Brooke and the others with each step, then setting her sights on Shayla and Sook. Sook is Shayla shielded behind him. At a critical moment, River arrives and confesses that he is not Sadako's boyfriend, but he understands how Sadako feels. The happiness you seek is in someone else's hands, and this unself-loving way of living is so humble that it's a big mistake. Eventually, Sadako was successfully penitentized and the mission was completed. River also comprehended the qualities necessary for a gentleman. At the end of the assignment, River earned the highest score in the emotion management class. Things have eased up a lot between him and Shayla. At that point, River suddenly says that he's entering the perfect gentleman contest. Only, he wasn't there to wish upon a unicorn, simply to get better. Shayla is happy for the change in River. On the other hand, Ross, who turned into Bai, told Brooke that he was going to participate in this year's perfect gentleman competition. He has a very important wish to make to the unicorn. After Brooke leaves, Ross voices that same wish. She wants to beg the unicorn to get Brooke over Ross and then try to get the two of them back together. More and more people want to participate in the perfect gentleman competition, but many freshmen are unable to sign up because they have less than 75 college points. The last chance is left for finals, and you can still expect to hit 75 if you do well. This year the school has different test questions for everyone in order to prohibit cheating. Those students who play it smart have no chance of cheating at all. Shayla went straight to the library to review until she fell asleep and woke up when the others had gone to dinner. Shayla, alone, makes the mistake of finding Brooke talking to her father in the book. So the real name of the school is called Hogwarts. Turns out Brooke's dad is the Gentleman's Academy, the first ever perfect gentleman three champion. This biographical book of magic chronicles much of Brooke's dad's story. Brooke often just ran to her dad to talk about all the fun things she had done back in the day with the perfect gentleman. On the other hand, 
Brooke's dad surprisingly arrives at the school, instantly causing a crowd of students. Brooke's dad tells a sniffing Brooke that the school has invited him to announce the list of perfect gentlemen who will be attending. He lives right behind the school. Brooke's dad invites Brooke to join him, but Brooke declines, citing school. Something seems to be wrong with the relationship between father and son. Then according to the law of conservation of mass, someone's relationship gets worse and someone's relationship gets better. Bertie's relationship with Shayla skyrockets because Shayla treats him to, well, sandwiches that taste like his sister. However, a small episode turns Shayla's mood upside down. Mom is about to return home from Cambodia, but Shayla excuses herself from the house to go to a concert. Ice is very depressed about this, but Shayla is also sad that she can't change back into her daughter's body right now. The next day, Sook stumbles upon a sullen Shayla. Shayla asks Sook if he misses home. Sook replies that's of course, and when he gets home the first thing he'll do is give his mom a big hug. Shayla is infected by Sook's sincerity and makes a secret resolution. But Sook can't be steady for more than three seconds before he starts pranking again, hesitantly saying to Shayla as he pulls out his helmet, Don't you have a helmet on your head? Shayla's hair being made fun of is just the beginning. Sook got on his bike and said to Shayla, Hug him before you go home and hug your mommy. On his way home from vacation, Shayla blocks Bertie, excusing himself that his house is far from school and wants to go home with Bertie for dinner. Bertie agreed straight away. As soon as she got home, Bertie had a hug with her mom, much to Shayla's envy. Shayla's mom learns from Bertie that Shayla and her daughter share the same name and can't help but marvel at the coincidence. Afterwards, Shayla was sipped on soup and was exclaimed by her mom that she resembled her daughter's pose. Plus, once Bertie says that Shayla's sandwiches taste a lot like her sister's, Shayla freaks out and changes the subject, but it raises Bertie's suspicions. While packing up the dishes, Shayla expresses her admiration for her mom for overcoming obstacles and working everywhere all year long. Mommy gave Shayla a loving hug, which straight away made Shayla couldn't hold it in any longer and ran off to the bathroom alone to cry. Bertie is even more puzzled when she learns from her mother that she made the garlic, scallions, chili peppers, pork, and dried fish needed for the sandwiches herself. It's mom's original way of making sandwiches, so how can Shayla make it taste the same? That's when Shayla came back from the bathroom and mom asked her to help with the chili sauce. Shayla, a first-time guest, finds her way straight to the chili sauce, and Bertie is now completely suspicious of Shayla. Bertie dialed her sister's number, and Shayla's cell phone on her desk suddenly lit up with Bertie's incoming message. Bertie must have read a lot of web novels and Japanese manga, and instantly accepted the sister turned boy setup, hugging Shayla into her arms with all her might. When alone afterwards, Bertie learns the ins and outs of Shayla's transformation, and the two brothers decide to work together to enter the perfect gentleman and borrow the wish given by the unicorn to change Shayla back. On the other hand, Brooke is having a hard time working up the courage to repair his father-son relationship, only to find out that Sook got to Brooke's dad first to talk. While chatting, Brooke's dad shows concern that Brooke is too competitive and stressed out, but instead appreciates the open-minded Sook. Brooke walks away angry. The much-anticipated final exams are finally upon us, and everyone is still in a relatively good frame of mind, with the exception of Brooke. Time and again he was dissatisfied with his answers, applied for new ones, rewrote only his answers, and continued to take the test until the time was up and the papers were forcibly taken away. Brooke's dad comes running to encourage Brooke, who throws down the line you lie and storms off in a huff. He runs to the library to accuse the dad in the magic books. At that moment, Shayla happens to be passing by and Brooke blames his dad for not telling him the truth growing up. Knowing that Brooke is not that good, Brooke's dad always praises him, which puts pressure on Brooke. Brooke's accusations were recorded verbatim by the grimoire. At that moment, he also spotted Shayla in the doorway. Brooke tells Shayla that he used to be a fat, ridiculed man. Brooke's dad is all encouragement and makes Brooke look like a lie. He starts trying to mess with Brooke's dad while quietly trying to lose weight and prove himself. This father-son relationship, where there is no truth, just drifted away. Shayla enlightens Brooke with stories about him and his brother's mom. Brooke also realizes that she's overreacting and plans to go back and delete her accusations against her dad from the grimoire. Unexpectedly, Dad is flipping through a magic book in the library and hears Brooke's accusations against him. The rift between father and son grows wider. The next day, Brooke's dad announces the names of this year's participants in the Perfect Gentleman competition. First place went to Sook, 
With the hard-faced Brooke taking second, Ross Sternby took third, Birdie came in fourth, Ocean took fifth, and River and Shayla tied for sixth. Brooke's dad also tells the group that the Sook with the highest score will have a privilege. This privilege will be revealed in the Perfect Gentleman Challenge. Brooke's dad and Sook cheer and celebrate as Brooke watches them turn and walk away. It turns out that the superficially popular and proud Brooke can also have such a heartbreaking experience. Will he actually succeed in winning the Perfect Gentleman's competition and get his father to truly recognize him? Is he Shayla's Prince Charming or not? The much-anticipated Perfect Gentleman Challenge has finally begun, and this time the school is using virtual reality technology. The seven participants will put on the VR birdie and will start the challenge task. Their performances in the challenge will be broadcast live throughout, and the three with the highest netizen votes will advance to the next stage of the finals. The race began with the participants being put into a hotel. They need to solve a kidnapping case and Chelsea, the hotel owner, is having a field day with the hotel manager. His daughter Narciss has been kidnapped and the kidnappers demand that three million be ready for delivery in the hotel lobby by 12 midnight. The group decided to split up, with Brooke, Bai and Shayla going to investigate Narciss' room, while the others went to check out the security cameras. Birdie, looking at the surveillance, they realized something was wrong. The people on the surveillance are basically wearing masks, and Narciss' disappearance is strange. She entered the room at 9.57 p.m., housekeeping came in at 10.08 p.m. to do sanitation, and left around 10.28 p.m. Another waiter appears on the surveillance afterward, and Ocean guesses that the unmasked ones are unimportant characters. Sook volunteers to find the waiter, and Bertie sits in on the surveillance room. The housekeeper tells Ocean and River that Narciss was still there when she went in to do the cleaning and when she left the TV was on and Narciss was gone. River remembered that the janitorial cart was struggling in the surveillance and asked if there was a problem. Housekeeping also felt that the cart was much heavier than usual, and she later found a bobby pin when she was organizing the cart. The two of them immediately rushed to meet Chelsea with the hairpin, but Chelsea is too busy earning money every day to confirm that it's Narciss' hairpin. Shayla and Ross consider the girl's perspective and conclude that the hairpin is Narciss. And inside the video sent by the kidnappers, Narciss is wearing the same but different colored hair clip. It's now popular for girls to wear two bobby pins of the same style, but different colors. On the other hand, Sook fails to find the waiter and returns to the surveillance room with a photo he found. The man in green holds a box at Narciss' door. Sook rushes to the walkie-talkie to inform the others, and Ocean and River go after the suspicious guy. Brooke opens the box and realizes that it contains Narciss' braids. The kidnapper's intent to terrorize is clear. Ocean's side of the story is eventually run off by the man in green, who tells Brooke over the walkie-talkie that the other guy is familiar with the layout of the hotel and must be a hotel staff member. Bertie agrees. The green man escaped through the safe passage, most likely because he knew there were no cameras there. Without delay, Brooke decides to search the hotel in groups. Bertie continues to stay in the surveillance room and take control. Ocean continues to team up with River. Brooke is about to split Shayla and himself into pairs when Sook snaps over the walkie-talkie and tells Shayla to wait for him where she is. With that, Brooke is left to team up with Ross. Ross doesn't look too good. Later in the action, Ross asks Brooke if she wants to team up with Shayla, and Brooke denies it, stating that she just wants to win. Ross then asks Brooke why, when she wished on the unicorn, she didn't wish to forget Ross, but to stop loving Ross. Brooke said slowly, there were so many unforgettable and wonderful memories between him and Ross that he didn't want to erase the past that was real. Ross, suddenly a little touched, hugged Brooke vigorously. On the other side, Sook and Shayla finally discover Narciss. The two of them chased him all the way to the lobby. That's when the man in green appears and stabs Sook, and Shayla rushes to use her walkie-talkie to inform the other partners. She hugs the dying Sook and is devastated. Eventually, Sook disappears into light in her arms. At that point, Bertie reported that the green man was on the 10th floor. As the crowd heads to the 10th floor, Brooke suspects the waiter, who hasn't been much of a presence. Sure enough, the green man's clothes were found in the house where he had been. Under Bertie's surveillance, the group eventually catches the waiter and also finds Narciss. It turns out that it was all self-directed by Narciss, who wanted to get her father's attention and spend more time with her. So she sneaks into the cart while the cleaning lady comes to do her hygiene and later meets the waiter and uses the ransom money to ask the waiter to help her put on a show. The waiter, however, was not willing to let it all end like that. He had to get his money today. 
At that moment Sook surprisingly reappeared and took out the photo he had found earlier, which was of the waiter and his illness. S. Daughter. Behind the photo is written a message from her daughter. Work hard. Pops I will be cured. The photo of his daughter and Sook's sincere enlightenment sensitized the waiter and the mission was eventually completed successfully. Ross is curious as to how Sook was able to get back into the game. Bertie immediately guesses that this is the perk of being first in line for an extra life in the previous campaign for the perfect gentleman. At the end of the competition, the three top vote-getters for the first round of the challenge were announced as Sook, Brooke, and Shayla. They made it to the finals of Perfect Gentlemen. Inside the dressing room, Shayla finds Sook, who is not allowed to die again. Sook can't resist hugging Shayla and confesses his love for her. The scene is seen by Brooke, who immediately leaks the news that Sook is in the dressing room to the reporter who is looking for Sook. At this moment, facing Sook's confession, Shayla is not sure she can change back to her daughter's body because she has a lot of things to hide from Sook, and she is not sure if Sook will accept her. So she rejects Sook and runs off crying, yelling I'm not gay. Brooke has a bad conscience on his side, and he wants to use a reporter to break the news that Sook is gay. That way, Sook's form will suffer and Brooke will have a better chance of taking the title and proving it to his dad. But Brooke regretted it after all, and he walked quickly to the dressing room to ask Ocean if he had seen the reporter. Ocean then tells him, indicating that what Brooke feared has happened after all. Ocean saw it on his phone when he left, the blurb about Sook and Shayla being together. The next day, reporters began to hound Shayla. Sook takes it upon himself to attract the press and take all the blame, stating that he was the one who unilaterally liked Shayla and it had nothing to do with Shayla. If the internet feels that Sook's status as a gay man is detrimental to a gentleman's character, it's okay to not vote for him. The incident makes Ocean suspicious. And it turns out that before Brooke arrived, Ocean happened to see a reporter filming something. Once Ocean came, the press was scared off. Brooke then came running in a panic and asked if she had seen the reporter. Ocean thinks about Brooke and Sook's rivalry and begins to suspect that Brooke has known about Sook and Shayla's relationship for a long time and purposely let a reporter in to expose the story. Brooke acquiesces to Ocean's claim, and Sook, who has been listening outside the door for a long time, shows up at that moment. He angrily punches Brooke, who doubles over and mumbles sorry. Disappointed, Sook turns around and walks away. Immediately after that, the perfect gentleman finals began. This time they were up against themselves, and the school replicated each contestant in a virtual reality space, pitting them against clones of themselves. This is embarrassing for Shayla, and I don't know what kind of tech this is, but it's a direct copy of Shayla's daughter body. The viewers who were watching the live stream froze outright as the school authorities suspended the live streaming incident, citing poor internet, and forcing out the mysterious principal. Upon her questioning, Shayla told her full story. The principal told Shayla to make her story public and allowed Shayla to continue competing. The match continued immediately after, first given to Brooke's perspective, with a victory condition of dropping your opponent five times. Brooke's clone begins to fulfill the rituals of the tournament by bowing. Brooke sees this and begins to bow as well, only to be suddenly attacked by the replicants. Brooke yells at the replicants for being mean, and the replicants are not impressed. Isn't the clone doing whatever it takes to win copied from Brooke, the original? Sook is also having a hard time with his race, where he has to compete with the clones in running. Though he was temporarily ahead in the match, the thought of Shayla took him right out of the fight, and he fell down hard, throwing punch after punch and letting out the depression in his heart. Shayla encounters the task of finding her clone before the candle flame goes out. The dimly lit forest overwhelmed Shayla, and every step she took was incredibly difficult. To help Shayla, Sook tries to remove VR's birdie, but the replicants keep warning him that it's dangerous. Nevertheless, Sook forces birdie off. At this point, Brooke's side has been dropped four times and is about to lose. After a long time, he found a chance to kill back. However, Remembering his despicable behavior of doing anything to win, he hesitated. Replica capitalizes and drops Brooke for the win. Brooke loses the match, but looks as if he's won with a long overdue smile on his face. This time, he let go of his obsession with winning and losing. At the end of the competition, Shayla received the highest number of votes and was voted the perfect gentleman of the year. Brooke also reconciled with her father. Shayla learns, on her way to the Unicorn Wish, that Sook has forced off the VR's birdie and is in a coma with life-threatening injuries. Shayla is in crying mode again. Eventually, Shayla finds the unicorn and sacrifices her chance to turn back into a daughter by making a wish to restore Sook to health. 
Shayla finishes her wish and runs to the hospital to visit Sook again. Rook is impressed to learn that Shayla saved Sook by using the opportunity to turn back into her daughter. Good thing Sook didn't fail Shayla and is out of harm's way. They and Sook run off again to comfort a self-absorbed River. The progress bar doesn't allow River to be arrogant anymore and he and Shayla make up. Ocean, who has been eavesdropping for a long time, rushes in to set the mood, and the three of them are once again back to their old intimacy. On her side, Ross is about to leave for Germany to start a new life, and before she leaves, she uses Bai's identity to tell Brooke that her sister, Ross, hopes that they won't forget the good memories they once had of each other. Brooke agreed with a smile. The dust settles and Bertie leads Shayla home, ready to confess to her mom. Mom looked at the two of them in this stance and asked with a smile if they were dating. Poor, poor Shayla finally relents and lets out a sob. Upon learning the truth, Mom gave both brothers a loving hug. After this, the days returned to peace. Gyan, one of the twins, complains to Shayla that twin sisters Gwen and Bertie are in a relationship and that she is going to pursue Shayla for a relationship as well, startling Shayla. But Bertie is just not up to it, and as soon as Gwen shakes his hand, he nervously pulls it away. Gwen is furious about this and wants a face cleaning service to make up for it, but Bertie is too scared to kiss up to it either, and her movements are stiff and sluggish. Shayla and Gyan running around messing up ah, the sweet smell of love. That's when Shayla suddenly gets a call from Brooke asking her to come to the hospital right away. Turns out, Sook is awake. Brooke leaves in time to make room for the two of them. Ocean and River also visit Sook, and Ocean, who has always admired Brooke, forgives him as Brooke apologizes and the broken relationship is restored. Brooke lures Ocean and River away with pearl milk tea to prevent them from bothering the two people in the ward. At this moment, the newly awakened Sook is upset to learn that Shayla sacrificed herself to save him. Shayla also confesses to Sook at this time. Next year Shayla will also be participating in The Perfect Gentleman, wishing on a unicorn and turning back into a daughter. Shayla is worried that Sook won't like her as a daughter, but Sook suddenly hugs Shayla and says that he likes Shayla, Shayla who takes care of other people's feelings, Shayla who is bullied by him. Let alone turning into a boy, turning into a unicorn, Sook likes it too. At the end of the story, Sook lectures Shayla that things like confessions should be left to the boys, and ah, uh, you seem to have something in your mouth, let me wipe it off for you. The story of the show is about to end for now amidst an intimate kiss between the two. I wonder if you're happy with the ending where Shayla doesn't turn back into a girl? Everyone can leave your answers in the comments section. Well, that's it for today's video. We'll see you next time.